Hey, what's good? This is Trey at Animation Station, and I'm coming at you one more time with another episode review of The Legend of Korra, Book 2, Spirits, Episode 4, Titles, Civil Wars, Part 2. This episode can basically be split into two parts what basically goes on with Tenzin and his fam and what goes down between Korra and her fam both are having some family troubles right now and we're going to get into uh, what's going on with each of them first I'm gonna actually talk about Tenzin because his was uh, a little more anticlimactic and just more generic storyline based so Tenzin is still looking for his daughter Iki and he finds her. It's not a kidnapping like I thought it would be. And uh, she's just chilling over there with the Sky Bison, kicking it, sipping, some, sipping on some tea. And Tenzin actually finds out that he can actually relate to Iki more than he can with his other children. And uh, because he, she's going through the same problems that he's actually going through. They're both having troubles with their, with their brothers and sisters. And he actually sits down and joins her for a temporary retreat away from that reality before he faces them again. But after a while, they realize the importance of having a family and they realize that it's a lot better than being off by themselves. So Tenzin and Iki, they arrive back with the rest of their family and uh, we actually get to see them interact and apologize and all that good stuff. Real Nickelodeon of them. And we get to see the picture that Kaya shows of Aang, Katara and all three siblings together. Uh, when they were kids and stuff and it made me really want to see uh, maybe some kind of series or maybe a significant flashback with Aang and his uh, family well adult Aang and adult Katara taking care of their kids and stuff like that because that was pretty interesting I remember in um, back in season one of Legend of Korra book one we got to see Aang and him taking down one of those bloodbenders when he was a grown when he was a grown man and stuff like that and I really enjoyed that scene and I hope to see some more stuff like that so they put out another series with Aang as an adult I would definitely watch that and uh Nickelodeon that would be very smart to do Okay, so before I get too sidetracked, let me switch back over to Korra side of things because this is the legend of Korra. And uh, just want to say a few things starting off. Unalak is one dirty mother. Shut your mouth. Uh, Bolin is a punk and a fool. And Varric is in a giant platypus with his assistant. Huh. I wonder what they're doing up in there. Huh. I'll let you use your imagination. But fast forward a little bit to the trial section and wow, that trial. No defense attorney, really? What kind of trial is this? No one can even say anything good about the Southern Water Tribe. They probably all had probably only had all Northern Water Tribe members there present at the trial. Because if they had the Southern Water Tribe there, I think they probably revolted right there. Like, hold on, hold on, homie. You ain't even hearing what they got to say, man. Let them talk. Didn't even hear a word from them. And at this moment in time, I thought the judge was pretty narrow-sighted. I mean, he's failing to realize the consequences of his verdict because he actually sentenced, and sentenced all, everybody except Cena, which is Cora's mom, to death. I mean, to death. That's final. There's no coming back from that. You think the water, Southern Water Tribe is going to just sit down and just take that? Because uh, Tom Rock, I think that's how you pronounce his name, is Cora's father and maybe temporary chieftain of the southern water tribe he's looked at like a chief so if he goes down everybody's gonna go everybody's gonna go ham it's gonna be crazy and Cora got pretty pissed with the break too that was pretty funny to see her she's like if you kill them i'll kill you i'm like ah Cora. she is finally learning that might is right at least in her case and then we get to see her strong arm the judge later on because she doesn't really like the verdict and the situation going on. And her mom's back at home crying without her dad there. And uh, this guy really spills the beans on Unlock. And we learn about all his dirty laundry. And I'm like, bang, bang. 
It's about time. Shots have been fired. We can now see our main antagonist, our new villain that has just emerged. It was apparent to me on day one that this guy could not be trusted and now is apparent to everybody watching the show. Unalak for the loss, okay? Not for the win, for the loss. This man has lied, manipulated, incarcerated, and agitated myself. After hearing this news, Cora is determined to get her father out of prison. And she heads back to, uh, we see Kasumi, Bolin, um, what's his name? Mako and Varric. I'm going to just call them Team Avatar because they seem to be together during this entire episode. Well, at least up to this point and beyond, they'll be up together. So this Team Avatar and Team Avatar comes up with a plan to release the prisoners from jail. And, well, we have the Shady Merchant as the uh, the mastermind of the planting, which I think is a pretty good choice. I mean, who knows how to scheme better than a Shady Merchant? <laughs> Our gang heads straight to the prison and we meet up with Unlock and Cora actually confronts this man and tells him, hey, I know your dirty secrets. I know what you've been up to. And Unlock responds with some very poor water bending. Very poor water bending. First grade level water bending. I was like, come on, man. You can't be the leader of the water bending tribe and come out with some skills like this. We've seen an excellent water bender. We've seen what an excellent water bending can do. Blood bending up your game of Unlak. I mean, he don't have to blood bend, but he better be throwing some some glaciers out there. I mean, come on. And uh, the team ends up on Varric's ship because the, f the father's actually not there. Unlak has already whisked him away. And first off, let me say a plane without a runaway fail, 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 fail. Luckily, there are some firebenders in the vicinity. And they can act as propulsion. And they head off into the plane. And Cora activates her avatar state mode. Get the ships out the way. Y'all can't handle me. Lands on the ship. Gets the father back. Tells the father the master plan. And is on. The war has been declared. And Tom Rock is ready to take Unalak down for the count. And I don't blame him. The man has been destroying him from day one. And he deserves... Everything he's about to get from Avatar, Korra, and and uh, Southern Water Tribe. And at the final end of the episode, we get to see the girlfriend from hell, Eska, <laughs> just complete raging out. And uh, Bolin is just like full speed ahead. Get me away from this crazy girl. He's actually thankful that this happens just so he can get away from her. It's crazy. You probably would end up fighting her later on. She go break down crying. I really did love you. I like, oh, shut up. Shut up. But overall, I really enjoyed this episode. Probably my favorite so far. And the South has declared war. Unalak is exposed. And Team Avatar is about to travel to a new area, which I'm very happy to see. Preferably somewhere away from the snow and uh, with somewhere with an interesting scenery. Maybe Ba Sing Se, maybe, uh, but don't count on it. Don't get your hopes up on that. Uh, hope you enjoyed the review. Go ahead and like, comment, subscribe, and fave, all that good stuff. And tune in next week because I'll be back again with another episode review of The Legend of Korra.